the next question is so you have eliminated the artifacts the next question is whether the finding is testitum related or the background findings so background findings are the microscopic findings which are uh, uh, observed or recorded in control animals so these uh, background findings are like spontaneous in, in uh, nature and it's are actually age related degenerative findings so the, uh, we can expect background finding in each and every study so there is no clean study so there is no normal animal at all so there will be some amount of pathology will be there in that the background which has to be recorded so the recording of the background findings will serve uh, to build the historical data so when there is any subtle differences between control and treated animals then background uh, the historical data will rescue us so we have to compare with the not only concurrent control so we have to compare with the historical data so which actually give you an idea whether the finding is really a testatum related or not and uh, the background finding are as, as i mentioned it's not uh, due to the testatum but sometimes the background finding may be exacerbated by the testatum administration so that we have to differentiate the example being a chronic progressive nephropathy so i'll explain in the next slide uh, so so some of the examples of the background findings so you can find uh, the mononuclear cell infiltration in each and every organ so you can see in uh, every pathology report you can see the mononuclear cell infiltration especially in the liver and the chronic progressive nephropathy which is actually a age related uh, finding which you can see it in the um, uh, sprog dolly rats most often in the uh, carcinogenicity studies and uh, so this finding actually in the uh, shorter duration of the uh, studies you can see like uh, tubular basophilia or tubular cast which eventually progress to chronic progressive nephropathy uh, in the uh, um, extended duration studies and cardiomyopathy again it's an uh, background finding in most of the male rats is with these probably male rats and uh, the findings like alveolar macrophages focal necrosis of the liver focal uh, hyperplasia bile duct hyperplasia retinal atrophy and uh, acinocele atrophy are all these are uh, most of the times it occur as a background findings and note about retinal findings so retinal atrophy actually it occurs most of the time it is due to the excessive exposure to the light so what happens is uh, if uh, in a uh, in a long term studies the cages are usually rotated among the racks so if you keep the high dose animal uh, always at the uh, top uh, rack so those animal receive excessive light so which may leads to the retinal degeneration at and atrophy which makes the uh, pathology life very hard because you may not have the atrophy in the control animals and if you see the atrophy in the high dose and it is very difficult to for you to ju justify whether it is really a background or testitum related so to avoid the situation what uh, the toxicologist has to do uh, if it is a long term study like uh, beyond 28 studies it is uh, it is advisable to rotate the cages once in a week so that all the animals are have receiving the uh, uniform exposure to the light uh, one of the uh, uh, background finding what we observed in a uh, uh, sprog dolly male rat in a uh, like uh, uh, two year uh, study so th this is a normal kidney and this is the kidney with the chronic progressive nephropathy so this is actually sub gross photo micrographic and very well appreciate the changes what is going on here the kidneys are extensively damaged the tubules are dilated and the tubules are filled with the uh, proteinous cast and the interstitium it's not uh, appreciable here it's infiltrated with inflammatory cells and the glomerulus is almost fibrosed but they still this animal is survived and uh, this animal is actually due a uh, sacrifice due to the moribund condition that so now you have ruled out the artifacts and you have ruled out the background findings so the next question is is it test item related so test item related findings generally occur most of the times in the uh, uh, in the uh, toxic and exposure group only i mean test item administered group only but sometimes you may see the incidence in the uh, uh, control animals also but in such cases you have to compare with the uh, historical data to rule out whether it is a background finding or test item find related finding another thing is that always the test item related finding so the dose response so the severity and in and incidence increase over the dose so that is an another important things that you uh, you have to keep it in mind to identify a test item related finding and another uh, most important finding so these uh, test item related findings generally don't occur in isolation so there will be a, a clinical pathology correlate gross pathology correlate organ weight or sometimes in life correlate so it won't occur as uh, most of the time as an isolated finding 
okay now the next you now you identified and uh, finding is a testatum related the next question arises is whether it is adverse in the preclinical species so now we have to define the adversity so whether it is an adverse non adverse or adaptive so there are a couple of definition we will see here so what is an adaptive change adaptive change a cell or organism's response to the genotoxic exposure so that the cell uh, will survive in the uh, uh, environment which contain the genotoxic with retaining its uh, full function so this is called as an adaptive change so example being the hepatocellular hypertrophy so hepatocellular hypertrophy generally occur in case of uh, enzyme induction so why there is enzyme induction so when you uh, uh, load the, uh, the system with the toxicant this is, uh, the system tries to eliminate the toxicant by producing more enzymes which is responsible for the uh, metabolism of the particular compound so as a result there are there is more protein synthesis and therefore endoplasmic reticulum is enlarged the cell is enlarged ultimately the organism large so the, it's an, actually an adaptive response but sometimes this response become adverse when the adaptive uh, capabilities overwhelm then cell will undergo degeneration or necrosis so in such cases it's an adverse finding so adaptive response uh, may or may not be reversible most of the time it is reversible and it may be adverse as well so as i given on example earlier this is the tracheal epithelium which is exposed to the smoke so what happens over a period of time the protective uh, column of cell uh, layer ciliated cell layer is replaced with the squamous cell layer so although cell, the cell can survive in the environment so what happens is that the mucosal barrier is lost so uh, so the uh, um, uh, particles i mean uh, uh, particles in the air as well as infectious particles cannot be removed by the mucosal barrier as a result the animals are more susceptible susceptible to the infection so although it's an adaptive it's it's, it's considered as an adverse finding so what is mean by the adverse effect so adverse effect is a biochemical morphological or physiological change that adversely affect the performance of the whole organism or reduce the organism's ability to respond to an additional environmental change so in simple terms so adversity indicates harm to the uh, uh, test animal in the given uh, constraints of the study so non adverse findings they are, they are all actually uh, biological effects that do not cause the biochemical morphological or physiological changes that affect the general well being lifespan development reproductive function of the animal so findings are less likely adverse so if there is no alteration in the general function of the test uh, test organism uh, or tissues affected say for example decrease in the alt ast um, prothrombin time bilirubin actually we know increase in these findings have an effect on the animal but the decrease in these enzymes and uh, param these parameters actually there is no biological implications although sometimes you can see the decrease in alt alc but there is no um, relevance uh, i mean there is it's not an uh, adverse to the animal the next thing is that if the change represent an adaptive response that is not adverse we already discussed about that which is hepatocellular hypertrophy associated with the level and enlargement and if the finding is transient in nature again it is not an adverse finding say for example if you are uh, conducting a dietary study and the, the test datum is not palatable so what uh, happens is that uh, due to the palatability the animal may not take enough feed so which results in decrease in food consumption and over the period of time the animal will get acclimatized so this is a transient effect and not an adverse finding and if the finding is uh, isolated or independent say for example if there is uh, sometimes uh, you can see elevation of uh, liver enzymes i mean like alt or ast up to two fold you will not see any histopathology correlate so in such uh, conditions uh, although this is a test datum related finding but not considered as adverse in the given study but if you extend the duration of the drug administration in maybe in the chronic studies so it may results in the um, uh, hepatocellular damage maybe in the next study it may be con con considered adverse but in the present study where there is no histological correlate so it should be considered as non adverse finding so actually now adversity not only study wise actually when you when you have multiple studies uh, done for a compound so we can define for overall uh, so what is the adverse effect so not only based on the single study and if the effect is secondary to the uh, consequence of uh, another uh, primary effect say for example the decreased body weight 
so decrease body weight will reflect in the organ weight so what happens is the organ weight also decreases but the, here pr the primary finding is the decreased body weight which is then the decrease in organ weights are considered as secondary weight so these are all not considered adverse finding and if the effect arises from the some inherent biological property of the animal model say for example if you are conducting a inhalation study no only exposure the animals are restrained for about 4 hours and for daily for about 28 days which may result in uh, actually stress to the animal which causes uh, changes in the stress related changes in the organ weight and histology um, which i am going to show in the next slide so such findings are generally considered not adverse so next question is so you have seen an adverse finding in an animal so is it relevant to the human being so to answer this question uh, so the species difference uh, has to be taken into account so as i mentioned earlier about the chronic progressive nephropathy which is actually a unique phenomenon for the male rats especially sprogdoli male rats and uh, so it is a similar condition that does not occur in human being even though the testatum exacerbate the chronic progressive nephropathy in rodents so this is actually considered not relevant to the human beings so although the adversity is defined for the uh, test species so this finding is not relevant for the further discussion similarly there non glandular stomach findings say for example the statins uh, like atorvastatins so when you conduct an study in the rodents it often times it causes the um, changes in the non glandular stomach so uh, like hyperplasia squamous cell hyperplasia and hypertos hyper uh, hyperkeratosis but this finding is not relevant to human being why because human being does not have the uh, non glandular counterpart so there is only glandular stomach so although the esophagus is similar in histology the um, actually the testatum is not uh, staying in the esophagus for longer period of time it just actually pass through the esophagus but in non glandular stomach it, it stays for a period of time which causes the irritation leads to the, the changes in the mucosa um, but it is not considered not relevant to the human similarly the changes in the heart and gland like uh, it, human does not have a heart and gland so those findings are not relevant and the thyroid findings in rats actually the thyroid hormones are very tightly uh, regulated in um, uh, rats and there is a difference in the thyroid binding globulin the some most of the times uh, you would have seen the reports with uh, primary findings secondary findings so how to differentiate between primary and secondary findings the primary findings are the findings which is actually directly caused by the uh, test item as such but the secondary findings are downstream to the primary findings so say for example decrease in the body weight which results in the decrease in organ weight and it actually ref reflect in histologically as well especially in lymphoid organs so such cases uh, the only we have to consider the body weight loss as a primary finding all other downstream effects are secondary and not considered generally for the adversity definition and another example is like hemolysis hemolysis is the primary finding as a result of hemolysis uh, the hemosiderin started accumulating in the spleen so again here the uh, hemosiderin accumulation in the spleen is considered as secondary so what are the stress response so most of the time the toxicologist has to face this i mean um, when they conduct the studies in the day to day life so what are the stress uh, response so whenever actually there is a decrease in the body weight a substantial decrease in the body weight as a result of a test system administration so we can see the downstream effect in the other organs uh, and as well as if there is a decreased uh, food consumption so the organ weight get alters so like uh, lymphoid organs like thymus and spleen weight decreased and adrenal weight increase why the adrenal weight increase is due to the um, over production of corticosteroid hormones so there is a hypertrophy in the adrenal so again it causes uh, the uh, corticosteroids causes the alt uh, alteration in the circulation in leukocyte counts so you will see the increased neutrophil and decreased le lymphocytes and uh, eosinophil counts and we can often times we can see the uh, decrease in the weight of reproductive organs especially uh, accessory sex glands in males uh, as well as uh, uterus weight in uh, females so if there is a very severe reduction in body weight so the reproductive function shut down Uh, as a result you can see the atrophic changes in the reproductive organs and uh, so these are all actually not considered as adverse so in summary so toxicology pathology helps to understand what changes occur in the test system when you administer a compound and whether the findings are testatum related or not and whether the findings are really adverse to the preclinical species 
and how it predict the outcome of uh, human or animal health when you extrapolate, extrapolate the data. So not only that, so what biomarkers to be monitored in a uh, clinical trials. So you can also get the idea from the preclinical toxicology studies. So if there is, uh, 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 if you get uh, uh, biomarkers, I mean like um, as I mentioned earlier, so if you see the elevation of liver uh, biomarkers, so we can monitor those markers in the clinical trial as well to see whether the drug is causing any adverse effect during clinical trials. And ultimately, so the pathology data helps the toxicologist to define NOEL, and the NOEL is not uh, actually defined in the pathology data. So pathology data actually summarize, uh, it characterize the, what are the characteristic findings of the to toxicology related findings or, or organ toxicity in the report. And so the pathology uh, report also say up to, at, up to what dose level you can see the findings and the, whether the findings are adverse or not. And it is up to the toxicologist to compile this data as well as to compare with the inlet phase to, do, to define the NOEL, which actually uh, helps in the deciding the dose for first in human clinical trials. So that's all I'm done. And uh, so I would like to uh, thank Dr. K. S. Rao for providing me the opportunity, and as well as Dr. Banu Singh, who has provided some insights into, into this presentation as well as uh, for the Talks Google Foundation, as well as Engine International Limited for, perm for permitting to do this activity. So you can refer, there are some of the references I have given here, so you can go back and refer, especially the Society of Toxicology Pathology has many position papers. So if you go back, if you go to this link, there are very useful articles, which is not only useful to the pathologist, it's actually very, very much applicable to the toxicologists as well. Please go through these articles, I mean, if you find time. So, thank you, and if there are any questions, I'll take. Yeah. So age related changes, actually it starts from the, uh, we cannot define like that. I mean, so maybe um, beyond uh, 90 day studies, you can start uh, more age related changes. And especially if you see the uh, carcinogenic studies, but animal, uh, most of the, like 40% uh, of the animal may not survive up to the, uh, until the end of the study. So animals started dying. So maybe beyond one year, we can see more uh, age related changes. Uh, but the uh, the background changes, it's it's not uh, like you can start seeing even from the 14 day studies also sometimes. So it's not that age related. But when the age increases, the incidence of background finding increases. Thank you. One more question. Yeah. So uh, every species is unique, right? So animal species, so even within the animals also, every species is unique. Okay. In that case, how should we connect or to correlate the results of the animals, means what kind of additional care we take when we extrapolating the results of the animal to the clinical. So that, that actually when you uh, extrapolate the data, so you have to see the most relevant species and the, uh, the NOEL obtained in the most relevant species is considered for the uh, further clinical trials. So I mean it's actually like uh, it's not one species which predict the uh, human outcome. So you have to, uh, you are not only conducting the rodent studies, you are conducting the non-rodent studies. And you have to combine the both the data and to see. And even if you combine both the data, it will predict up to 70%. So there is no 100% prediction. So you can expect uh, so some uh, adverse effect, even if you don't find the adverse effect in the um, uh, preclinical species. So I have one question. So, yeah. can we go ahead? Who is asking the question? Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, I just want to know, like, what should be the uh, topicologist or pathologist approach towards the background finding, like, uh, which is exaggerated by the test item, and it may also be a class effect of that molecule. So, what should be our approach in terms of advising the clinician? Okay. Background finding, and it's also a class effect for that.
So if it's a background finding, again, it's not test attempted. Chapter no, is closed. It's increased by the test item. So if it is increased by the test item, so you have to see whether the finding is adverse or not. Uh, you can use the historical data to negate this, but still, if it is an adverse effect, so you have to consider and you have to, I mean, advise the clinician. Although it's a background finding, it's still uh, it's important. So you cannot simply ignore uh, it's a background finding. If the background finding is increased in the uh, treated group in a in a dose dependent manner, so although you have the historical data, so you have to interpret the finding very cautiously. Yeah, yeah. One more thing, actually, we have at the end of the day, we have we have one hour for uh, discussion, so we can still use that session for question and answer. So thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for your attention.